Hey there, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani with Calvin Ballister. Really excited. Today's all going to be about brain health, not only brain health and brain performance. Uh, Calvin's got a very unique hi history where he's healed from brain, a brain injury himself personally. So we're going to get the nitty gritty of what he's been able to do to heal techniques. He also has a book that's out called Feed a Brain. And you can go to feedabrain.com to check out his book where he talks about optimal nutrition for brain and neurological health, increasing neuroplasticity, helping your brain work better. Calvin, welcome to the show, man. Thanks so much, Justin. I got to correct you. It's Calvin without oh, the Oh, I'm sorry. Calvin. I, I want to go Calvin. It's, totally it's cool. like, it's, Calvin, it's, it's totally like cool. I'm missing. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I've had people be like, hey, you, you misspelled your name. I'm like, oh, man, uh -huh. I've been doing that all my You're life. You're so smart. <laughs> I know. I know. Totally, man. And I knew it was Kevin. It's just that like, you know, yeah, got yeah. it. Thanks for the correction. So we got Kevin Ballister here. So let's dig in, man. Let's start out with your history. You have a really unique history. What, 2011, you had a, a, a TBI, traumatic brain injury. Is that true? Yeah, severe traumatic brain injury, a severe diffuse axonal injury. And if you go on Google and type in diffuse axonal injury, you'll get source after source that all say, 90% of patients with this injury right. never regain consciousness. Yeah. And of yeah. the 10% that do, most are in a vegetative state. It's unbelievable so. that you were able to thrive. And I mean, you're you're functioning at a higher end. I mean, doing this kind of work, I mean, it takes brain power. And to come from where you were, what, six, seven years ago to where you are now is amazing. And you're helping, you know, thousands of people. Thank so that's you. amazing. So what happened? So you had this fall, right? So, all right. So I had the fall. And like you said, like, first of all, I woke up, which is just, thank God. Like, that's, I, I feel privileged, fortunate, lucky, um, purposeful, like, but additionally, I, I, I'm looking into what I was doing to protect my, my brain. And I think uh, ketogenic style metabolism played into it. Um, and and I, I wasn't like into nutrition at that point, but I wouldn't eat all day, you know? So I was probably, I'd probably enter into a ketogenic metabolism but that's a whole nother story let me let me break down what happened so i yeah. fell i wake up from a coma i didn't eat walk or talk for months my left hand was totally flexed inward i was breathing through a tube in my neck i was receiving wow. nutrition through a tube in my belly and i gotta put nutrition air quotes right Maybe we'll come back to that but yeah, yeah the the feeds they give you are just loaded with corn syrup and soy yeah. protein and probably all gmo too right yes exactly Exactly. So, um, so a lot played into my recovery um, as I regained my my everyday my normal ability. And when you and fell, you fell head first, right? I hit my head on a steel scaffolding. I was on a rooftop water tower. Yeah. And I hit my head on the steel scaffolding on the way oh. down, and I hit the back of my head on the concrete rooftop. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you, I, you're, you're coming to, you, you mentioned, okay, so now like w walk us through like, when were you like, okay, here's the conventional physical therapy path. Like when did you start to deviate in starting mm -hmm. to discover these natural therapies? Awesome. Well, actually my, my aunt was getting into functional neurology. She is a nurse practice or sorry, yeah. not neurology, functional medicine. She's a, she's a nurse practitioner. And she asked one of her colleagues, she, she told her that, that her nephew had sustained a severe traumatic brain injury. What, where should he go? You know? And her colleague was like, I, I you know, know exactly who I'd take it to if it was my loved one. But he lives all the way in Austin, Texas. And uh, my mother lives in Austin. And my mom was like by my side within hours. And stuck with me through through my five months ho month hospitalization, and then brought me to her home in Austin to recover. Wow. So I was in Austin, and so that's where I started seeing a functional neurologist. Um, and he introduced me to a what was his name? protocol. His name's Dr. Thomas Culleton. Culleton, right? Yeah, I know Culleton. He's great. I love Culleton. Yeah, he's great. So. Awesome. Um, so yeah, while I'm seeing Colleton, he um, he puts me on a on a nutritional protocol, and um, again, nutrition wasn't on my radar at that point. But I was like, I'm doing whatever it takes to get better, 
And if, you know, if I've been steered here and he says, change your diet, guess what I'm doing, you know? And oh, then totally. I began seeing how much of a difference nutrition was making. And I was like, whoa, all right. So I dove into study. I began to research. First, I was learning what had happened because I'd been in a fog for almost a year since my injury, total brain fog. And so I started going through medical records, text messages, emails, like deciphering what happened. And then at the same time, why did nutrition make such a big difference? And how could I optimize my recovery? So that's where I went down a rabbit hole. I, I, I was studying like my life depended on it because it did. And this is a common story with anybody who who is – um, hit with a with a debilitating condition or with something that just changes everything, guess what you do? You study like your life depends on it, right? And so here I am studying, and then at the same time, like I'm learning how to walk at this point, right. but we have the internet, and I'm able to reach people all over the globe that are doing things like you're doing and, and reaching people all over the place from their homes when they're unable to go outside, you know? And, and that, so I am so thankful of what you're doing, Dr. J. Oh, I and appreciate that. I appreciate absolutely. it. And I love the stories, the inspiration, because there's always someone out there, whether it's someone that got a TBI from a car accident or a fall like yourself or sports, or just they're in a chronic brain fog because of their diet and inflammation. I think the principles that you use to help you recover are going to be at least a starting point for everyone. So you hook, got hooked up with, with Collerton. He did some of the neurological work with you. Was he doing some exercises and was there any adjusting? What kind of, kind of therapies was he adding to his uh, to your protocol to help get you healed up? And then we'll deal with some of the nutrition and supplement stuff later on. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, he was doing, he was doing a lot of stuff, uh, yeah. particularly with my eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and I was seeing a neurooptometrist. So one of the main things he did was uh, or, or one of the like most pivotal things to my understanding that he did was that he put me in a uh, he gave me a VNG which is a video nystagmography big words basically you put on these goggles that yeah. videotape your eyeballs and then he spun me in a chair because what happens when you're spun in a chair is you have what's called a vestibular ocular reflex so your vestibular system and your visual system are very connected. So if I if like if I look at you and I shake my head but I keep my eye on you, I'm able to do that because essentially when you turn your head one way, the vestibular ocular reflex automatically tails your eyes to move the other way. Even if your eyes are closed with no visual stimuli, right? So so it was really interesting when I spun in a chair my eyes barely moved or they slowly moved the other way. And then what's supposed to happen is your eyes go the other way and they kind of bounce back and forth while you have like two reflexes sort of battling it out. You have the vestibular ocular reflex, which wants to move in the opposite direction that you're moving. And then you have, uh, you, you want to look straight, like your eyes want to continue looking straight. So it, it kind of bobbles back and forth. Mine slowly moved over to one side and didn't move. And so there was, there was a problem with this, this very primitive uh, neurological reflex. I mean, every mammal has this reflex. And so I didn't what happened have it next? Anymore. So he saw this reflex was missing. What was the next step? So we started doing vestibular therapy. I, I actually began... Um, Doing is have have you ever seen a gyrostem or yep. uh, some of the some of the functional neurology equipment? So he didn't have a gyrostem, uh, but this is what's cool. We can we can mimic a lot of the the same effects um, because I I got to the point where I was in much better health nutritionally, and I was able to do I was doing aquatic therapy, and I was able to do a backflip in the pool. So he, he was, I mean, he told me, he's like, you do aquatic therapy. Do you think you could do a backflip in the pool? Not a backflip, like out of the water into the pool. Right. Although I do that now. But at the time, like I would do it underwater, like just spin myself. 
because that would activate the uh, semicircular canals um, and affect my, my, my brain and affect my eyes, which affect your brain. Like, in fact, you have 12 cranial nerves. Right. Four of those are dedicated to your visual system. One third of your cranial nerves, one third of the nerves that are that make up the output from your brain to your body are dedicated to these two little peepers. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So that's why your eyes are the window to your brain. We've heard the eyes are the window to the soul, right? The eyes are from a neurological perspective. You can see so much about how the brain is functioning and how well it's uh, interpreting the world through vision. Yeah, we have um, our number six cranial nerve. That's uh, yep. basically controls the lateral rectus, eyes going out this that way and this sense. way. We have Ducens, right? We have the superior oblique, which is going to mm -hmm. be down and in. And that's, then the rest of the ocular motor. So, yeah, the trochlear nerve, what you were talking about, the uh, superior oblique. Yep. That was what was partially damaged with me. And it's very common with brain injury. Uh, fourth nerve injuries are very common because mm -hmm. that, that cranial nerve actually wraps around your brain stem, um, whereas the other ones just kind of are straight shot. So it has more surface area to be damaged. And it's pretty common. So what were the top three exercises that, that Carlton worked on with you that really had the best bang for your buck? Like you started doing these, they've become part of your routine. What really moved the needle for you on a exercise stimulation standpoint? Uh, I mean, it's, it's very specific to, mm -hmm. to different patients. I'm actually here at Revive Treatment Centers in Denver, which is a functional neurology. Uh, oh, awesome. Treatment center. It's awesome. I love it here. That's where we got the, uh, the spine over there. Love it. Um, yeah. And um, so, so. And, and the, just a caveat for everyone. I know it's going to be 100% individualized for you, yes. for your testing, but just, just for the listeners, we're not going to like listen, you know, people who are you having a brain injury, go see someone and get tested specifically. Yes. But I just want to know your pattern. What really moved the needle for you? And honestly, if you want to learn more about functional neurology, mm -hmm. check out my podcast. I interview all sorts of brilliant functional neurologists um it's the adventures in brain injury podcast we'll put the link below adventures in brain injury.com we'll put the url below mm -hmm. we'll put it in the show notes we're also going to put feed a brain.com so if you guys are listening and you want to access it just click below in the description either on youtube or the podcast and you'll see it there nice Perfect. yeah and again the adventures in brain injury podcast that i came into this from a brain injury but we are going way beyond brain injury Totally. Right. Yeah. All right. So um, some of the exercises I did, first of all, the backflips in the pool, um, mm -hmm. that, that really helped um, get my vision back together to a large degree. So I still have diplopia or double vision, but to a much lesser degree than what I did have. And my, my eyes team better and my vestibular ocular reflex is better. And all of that seems like yeah, it's your vision, you know, like, um, I mean, what I said is like, when, when my mom started taking me to uh, vision therapy, I was like, so I'll have to wear glasses for the rest of my life. Big deal. It's not like other people don't have to do that. She's like, we're doing it. And I was like, I, I need to really, I need to learn how to run and, and, and we learn how to walk and balance and all this stuff. And she's like, we're going to vision therapy. And I am so glad she took me there because, again, your eyes lend so much to everything else when it comes to your brain. So, totally. uh, so there's a gem for you. Like neurooptometry and, and uh, functional neurology have to do with the vestibular rehabilitation, um, balance, and then, and then affecting different um, – different um modes and and uh how do i say this so do you know vibration platforms are you familiar mm -hmm. with these yeah I one right in my right over here in the corner yeah, of my yeah. gym nice nice yep i i have one as well I, I actually got a vibration platform so that i could work with it every day because um your balance is so important as well that's vestibular right and for many brain injury um Many people with brain injury or any neurodegeneration or anything, 
they have trouble telling where they are in space and time. So for example, me, uh, Dr. Collagen said, put your feet together, stand up, and then close your eyes. Mm -hmm. And I did, and I like to toppled over, right? Like just started falling. And he caught me and all that, right? Yeah. But then he, um, and, and he was like, yeah, let's try putting you on a vibration platform and do it. And did it there, and I was able to stand. And the reason why is because- More input. Yeah, more input, right? Your body keeps on getting, like everything is firing yeah. and telling your brain like, okay, this is happening over here. So that was part of the rehabilitation that was really important. So the whole body vibration stuff, are there any specific exercises you're doing daily? Like do you do any cardinal gaze stuff where you're following a finger or do you do any of the – where you're following the red and white strips, the, the OPQ hmm. kind of OPK strip? OPK. Um, is there anything else that you're doing? What's your daily routine looking like from an exercise, a neurological exercise standpoint? I really love that you know um, of, of most of these um, – most of these – Modalities that yeah, a lot of great. functional medicine docs are not aware of. Like, I think it's I, important. Yeah, I think it is so important, and I really love like how ahead of uh, of a lot of the times you are, and I'm I'm hopeful that a lot of your listeners are as well. And I I love being able to promote and, and spread this information so that we can help more people and I love affect it. our lives positively. I love yeah. it. So all of it was great. Um, I. I tend to be extremely busy with things. So, um, so I, I try to consolidate my therapy exercises. Let's hear it. So how quick. does it look? So one of the things I do is a Brock string, yep. which basically you tie a string, you have some beads on it, and you bring it to your nose and you look at the beads. And what happens is your eyes focus on a spot. And it's so hard to explain this. And you see like two strings that go into the dot you're focusing on and then go out. And um, maybe you can put that in the notes or something because I have been trying to explain that in a way that like most people understand, but most people look at me like, what the hell are you talking about? So I get it totally. <laughs> yeah, I do that. Um, some, uh, you know, and then the rest of, of, uh, and, and no nose as well, like as I'm going down on that, as I'm like going up and down on the beads, so that I'm testing these different gazes and I change my gaze a little bit. And the whole point is if I can keep my gaze, if I can keep um, things single um, wh where I, from whatever gaze, which I am unable to do, but that's what I'm working to be able to do. Because vision lends so much to attention, and attention is everything. You uh, may benefit from BrainHQ.com. I actually I've got heard this, of Brain HQ. Yeah, I got this website from uh, from Tom Brady, not personally, but in his book. Tom, cool. who's a you know famous quarterback for the New England Patriots, huge Brady fan, but oh, he yeah. uses this for visual acuity, looking off receivers, you know, being able to look across mm -hmm. the field. So it's basically a computer program that involves things moving, and you look in the center, and then you pick up and you count. Right. Uh, you can download the app. I've actually phone. used. I, yeah, I just remembered. I've used Brain HQ. Um, I was part of a uh, a study for the University of Pittsburgh, where I had my brain scanned with high definition fiber tracking, um, which is just an amazing technology. Basically, breaks down the uh, neurons and axon fibers into two point four millimeter cubed voxels or three dimensional pixels. Wow. So we can see where neurons start, where they end. So where where these groupings of neurons? Because two point four millimeter cubed is super. Um, it's it's super high definition. However, we have eighty six billion neurons in our brain. Totally. So each one of those has like thousands, but you know they get damaged in groups, and we can all, we can see so much with them. So I'm so just I listening think, to some of the things you're saying right now, just to kind of break it up to people at home. I think vibration therapy, I think is great. Have you have access to a vibration plate? I think using some of the brain HQ applications uh, are doing similar with some of the exercises that you're doing or at home. So that's just two off the bat exercises that I'm just trying to give people that are listening at home, things that they could do maybe mm -hmm. just to help uh, anything else you want to add, or do you want to add to the brain HQ stuff? Yeah. So brain HQ, I used it for a bit. It was cool. 
um, but it's also it wasn't very specialized, and it wasn't um, it wasn't as useful as some of the the tools that I've seen out there, and that I've actually um, used um, myself. Like even apps that you can download for free. I use Which one. one Let's hear them. So I I use one called Elevate, mm -hmm. which is great. Um, also, just to keep my brain sharp after my injury, I began doing um, Khan Academy type things. Where so mm. Khan Academy was great because it walks you through math from whatever place you are, and then moving up and up and up. And uh, and I began taking like SAT questions on my phone as well. So there's different aspects of neurological recover because the thing is what you want to do to to keep your brain sharp or to improve your brain yeah to improve your brain or to rehabilitate your brain is basically if something's difficult that's what you need to do correct and i i think of it like uh like you know what you've been doing all your life you've you've basically it's a pathway that you've been do, using for so long that that pathway is now like a six lane highway. And when you want to do something else, if you want to choose a different route, you need to go through the woods, right? Totally. And so it's, you need some like motivation to go through the woods as well. And we, that's a, that's a whole nother, um, a whole nother book that I'm working on actually. That's about finding motivation and the mindset you need beyond recovery, but to like, for an optimal mind, um, using using your your brain and your attention and your um, emotions to your benefit to bring about the outcome your own. For. I love it. And what are some of the things that you're trying to accomplish at the Neurological Center up in Colorado this yeah. weekend? So I'm actually out here um, on my way to LA to speak for the World Congress on brain mapping and therapeutics. Cool. And I'm actually going to be bringing up some of the uh, neuroimaging that I did at the University of Pittsburgh. Um, oh, great. Because they scanned my brain um, in October 2016, and then again in uh, May? Yeah, May of 2000, no, July of 2017. And so, um, and so we got a company. So, okay. um, <laughs> so yes, uh, 2016, you got the mapping done and then what kind of uh, plasticity yeah. changes, um, have you seen since then? Well, so Dr. Okonkwo over at, um, uh, the university of Pittsburgh, he said to me, he was like, you know, we saw there were places in your brain that fell out of normal range on the, in the first scan and here in the next scan, we see them within the, the the normal range. So I'm really excited. I'm actually working on getting the actual like scans to present. And it's kind of been a little, uh, a little tricky, but. Cause I, I remember I, we, we talked like maybe three years ago at one of the paleo effects and I can see over the years, you continue to improve. I could see with the eye, and yeah. then with the speech, it continues yes. to get better and better and better. So there's definitely neuroplasticity that's happening year after year. So that must be really exciting for you, huh? It's great. It's awesome. You know, um, so what I'm doing at Revive is is TMS, which is transcranial yeah. magnetic stimulation, um, HBOT, so hyperbaric oxygen therapy, um, gyrostim, so like the backflips only like on steroids with a adult size gyroscope um we're doing uh low level light therapy um so so cold lasers we do it over the area where you hit yeah and over the area that's damaged what's really damaged. cool is that I, I i have neuroimaging to actually see where there's where there's structural damage um and and so it's it's really cool to be able to affect change with this. Have you done any spec scans at all? Like like uh, Dr. Per, not Perlmutter, uh, Dr. Amen does. Right. No, I haven't actually. Um, have you done any of the um, any of the neurofeedback scans that Dr. Andrew Hill does? I have not. 
No. Okay. I'd be curious. I'm really no, well, imagine that's probably on your list. You've got a lot yeah, of things that, that are in the queue, right? If you want to uh, make an introduction or anything, that'd be great. Oh, absolutely, um, man. I think with your podcast and everything, you know, it'd be great promotion to get you in there and it'd be, you know, be awesome to share your experience on the show. So yeah, I mean, if you let me know, I can get you connected with Dr. Andrew Hill. That's awesome. I would love nice. to see that. Um, which of Macaulay, um, oh, what's his name? Ben Greenfield just did yeah. something with Dr. Andrew Hill last year with some of the brain mapping stuff. So I would love to see you connect because I think with your injury and then the healing process, I think it's great to see the healing happen over time. Yeah. And yeah. I was just on uh, uh, Ben's podcast not too long ago. Oh, cool. And it was, it was fantastic. Yeah, I really like that guy. And thank you so much for what you said about, about um, seeing my improvement. Oh, you know? it's, it's, it's night and day. Nice. That's exactly what Michelle uh, Norris says. Oh, she, it's to totally night and day. And yeah, she's seen, seen me going through all this and what it you know, as far as the diet goes, like I was troubleshooting my dietary protocol for a long time, trying to find what was going to optimize my recovery. And, um, <clears throat> and you know, as, as I figured it out, like there were definitely bad days where I'd be like, Oh, that didn't work. And like, for right. example, Paleo effects, like I'm totally guilty of getting a bunch of paleo junk food. Oh, totally. <laughs> and going at it, right? Um, and I think that's that's like uh, a piece of the whole like, you know, people thinking, well, this is healthy because paleo. Well, no, not necessarily. Well, this is uh, not necessarily at all, right? Exactly. It's healthy yeah. if it's healthy. Mm -hmm. Right. right. A paleo treat, it's definitely better than going full on out gluten and stuff. But yeah, we got to right. keep it within the 80, 20 or 90, 10, you know, wh whatever right. that percentage for you. So what's your diet looking like right now? Are you kind of a keto paleo really trying to get the therapeutic level of ketones up? So yes, I think ketones are awesome. However, yep. my book does not require a ketogenic diet at all because really ketones, well, ketogenic metabolism a lot of people aren't prepared to no. metabolize ketones. And to go on a strict ketogenic diet, it will screw up their adrenals. It can screw up their thyroid. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of things that there's, there's some nuance that you need to be careful of. Mm -hmm. So the feed brain protocol makes room for a ketogenic diet and helps you like move into it. Because essentially what I did is I learned about a ketogenic diet and I, tiptoed into it and slowly moved and saw how it felt and like got my body used to metabolizing fat bit by bit. And when I was able to get to a therapeutic um, ketone level, like now, now it's like I very, very, very rarely eat grains. Like I'll eat grains um, as a treat, like you were saying, right? Um, I, I keep an eye on my blood sugar, you know, what, but I pretty much know what my blood sugar is like based on how I feel mm -hmm. because I've measured so many times. So actually, I want to tell your listeners, like, the, one of the best things you can do for your health is monitor your blood sugar. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I have an article on my website. I got my blood sugar meter right yeah, here. I got a go. ketone meter over there too. Nice. So feedabrain.com forward slash blood sugar. Um, lays out like what the deal is with blood sugar. And yeah, I, I, I um, level, I actually use a level device um, for breath uh, ketone analysis. Okay, um, cool. And that thing's like medical grade. Um, and and it, they have me testing it out. I actually brought it here to revive and we're, we're testing the ketones and seeing how, how, uh, how my metabolism is doing as we go through things. So yeah, um, but as far as as far as ketogenic goes, it's extremely neuroprotective. But your brain health is so dependent on your overall health. So you so so when transitioning to a ketogenic diet, it's not healthy for your brain to just to to be super keto when your adrenals are shutting down, you know? Um, so, so be careful, tiptoe into it, but yeah, I'm a huge 
huge proponent of, of ketogenic metabolism. So give us a rundown. What's breakfast, lunch, and dinner looking like? And I also want to dive into of how you apply fasting or intermittent fasting. I know mm -hmm. there's some great benefits with the cellular autophagy, which is kind of cleaning up some of those damaged cells. So let's go into your diet. What's breakfast, lunch, and dinner? And then how are you applying fasting if you are? Nice. So breakfast is – breakfast means break fast. Breaking so fast, it's when – it's really, so every night we're fasting, right? We fast for at least however long we sleep um, and usually longer, like hopefully eight hours at least, right? Um, and then we break that fast. And a lot of people are so caught up on that breakfast foods need to be breakfast or breakfast needs to be breakfast foods. It's got to be, uh, it's got to be cereal or oatmeal or pancakes or bacon or eggs or pop tarts, right? or whatever, you know, or fruit salad or whatever uh, General Mills says I should be eating for breakfast, right? And uh, um, and so, yeah, my breakfast is usually, it's usually greens with, um, with protein, like a fish or like a cold water fatty fish, mm -hmm. hopefully wild caught. Um, or steak. I'll often have steak for breakfast. So really good protein and fat, and you're really jumping. Protein you're really getting fat. the fat in there too. Absolutely, yeah. Protein, so full and fat, fat meats. Absolutely, yeah. Some days I'll uh, I'll also incorporate some some uh, heavily buttered um, drink, or or of I, I actually use ghee because I I react to to the milk casein fats. and the lactose, yeah. right? Yeah, mm. so, so I, like, like kind of like a bulletproof coffee kind of thing, right? Yeah, yeah, similar yeah. to that, right? And and the whole point is just to get that to like um, stoke the fire with some with get some the like wood with some like heavy wood to yeah. to to build that fire instead of throwing kindling on it, which is what General Mills wants you to do. <laughs> yeah, that that's my. I've been using that analogy for a decade with it's my patients. It's a patient, great right? analogy. Yeah. It's like you got the fire, the wood is that's the protein and fat, and then the more refined the carbohydrates go, the more it goes from twigs to paper to gasoline, which is nice. like alcohol and refined sugar. Right. So yeah, I, I think that's I think that's really good. And then I imagine uh, lunch and dinner, kind of the same thing: good meat, additional fat, full fatty cut veggies. Is that kind of the, the gist? You got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and as far as produce goes, I actually. Um, I separate into three different types of produce mm. um, that, that I make sure I get. So dark leafy greens, colored, mm -hmm. and sulfur containing. The three different types of, uh, of produce I get. And then also seaweed and organ meats and cold water fatty fish I, I have as like a real deal superfood and probiotics or fermented foods. So that sounds like you've been listening to to Dr. Terry Walls with uh, with the three areas. Is that correct? Yes, Dr. Walls uh, played a huge part in what it means to feed a brain. Absolutely, right. Um, I really, really, really respect her her research and just who she is in general. I yeah. love her work. Yeah, I was on a I was on a panel with her at Paleo FX maybe three yeah. years ago. Yeah. She's, she's great. That's awesome. All right. So we hit the diet and then just kind of things like p some people, they may have blood sugar instability, whether it's adrenal dysfunction or thyroid issues, they may not be able to do as much fasting, simple things for the listeners. Everyone should be able to do at least a 12 hour fast. So whether your last meal is at 8 PM, you can have breakfast at 8 AM the next day. That can be an easy 12 hour way to get some of that cellular autophagy recycling. I'm just curious, how are you applying fasting to your, your brain healing program? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, I also eat one or two meals a day, usually two meals. Um, and you know, I, I eat breakfast and dinner usually. So, but then sometimes I'll, I'll, uh, I'll fast. And, and here's the deal with when I fast, I fast when I don't feel like eating, you know, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, I, I don't think I need a meal right now. Like I'm just gonna drink water, and uh, and that's how that's how I'll fast. If I feel like eating, you better believe I'm eating. You know, and you're making sure you're getting enough nutrition during the day as well. So those meals, if you're doing two meals a day, yes. they have to be big meals. They're not big like meals. they got to be very purposeful with you know lots of phytonutrients, a lot of good fat, right? So you really got to make sure you get enough calories, yeah. i.e., nutrients to mm -hmm. sustain yourself, right? Yes, absolutely, especially the produce. Um, 
produce and protein. I mean, all of that, like for the brain health, I will, I will have just a massive salad or like yeah. two or three of them with, with some nice, healthy, um, uh, grass fed pasture raised or, or wild caught, um, protein meat, you know, and then lots of fats and oils on there. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, that's what I'll, I'll, I'll do. And I often do a bone broth fast as mm. well. That's which, great. Yes, it's great. You know, we got the electrolytes, we got the protein in there and it's just, it's, it's a nice, um, nice like cleansing. Um, it feels great. You'll, you'll notice if you do a bone broth fast, especially if you add in some, some, uh, fats and oils to that, it really, it, it feels it feels great. I, I have great clarity from that. That's awesome. And then do you um, take any extra hydrochloric or acid or enzymes to help with the digestion or do you feel like you're able to process everything really well? I don't, but some of my clients do. Um, I, 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 I'm, I'm pretty good at this point. Are you working I, with a lot of patients now? I am. Um, oh, actually I'm out here. Um, and one of my, one of my clients, um, her, her son is a revive. And so I, I just happened to be coming through and I was like, this is great. I'll be able to like see you and meet your family and hang out with you guys. And it was, it, it was, it's so good to uh, see them and then to see how we can optimize their, their recovery. Because honestly, I mean, honestly, when like this is a family that is going to the best, they went to the best neuro rehabilitation clinic in, in, in the world that they could find, but it happened well, the one of the best in the world. And it happened to be uh, Shirley Ryan in, um, in Chicago. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is one of the best according to the old model of neurology and right. what, what, and, and what we're doing, what I'm trying to do is, is improve the standard model in neuro rehabilitation. I mean, and the standard model of rehabilitation, it's like you got a brain injury. I mean, I, I mean, it's like sit in a corner, it, you know, turn the lights off, wear some sunglasses. Like what else is there? I mean, they don't really do much in the mainstream medical system for brain injuries or concussions or even that matter of fact. I mean, I've talked with uh, Dr. Russell Teams, who works with Dr. Brandon Brock. Uh, they're yeah, they're, they're yeah. really with the Carrick. And, you know, we talked about the you're just comparing the two models and you don't have many options on the conventional side, but there's a ton of models where we, you know, all the neurological exercises that you mentioned, all of the diet and lifestyle strategies, and then all of the supplementation, whether you're doing supplements to help with, with the nerf two pathways, whether it's green tea or resveratrol or, or acetylcholine or various antioxidant extracts to help with mitochondrial recovery. So, so, so many more options, so many more tools in our tool belt, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so much we can do. And I mean, you know, they weren't catching his hormones or pituitary function or a, a lot of things that we, mm -hmm. we can test for to see like where we are in the pathways because, you know, oh, his, his core is too weak. Like let's, let's put him in more physical therapy. Well, he's not, and this is just an example, like, well, this patient isn't, isn't producing human growth uh, hormone, right? So right. like we need to fix that. Before, like we can exercise until the cows come home, but if we don't have the ingredients, it doesn't really matter. Exactly, <laughs> right? We need, we need oxygen, we need stimulation, and we need essentially blood flow to, to make everything work, right? And if you're chronically inflamed and the nervous system, that, right, that, that connectivity is weak, then it's going to be hard to get all those muscles communicating, right? So that totally makes sense what you're saying. And if people want to get a hold of you, Kevin, because they, you know, they have some kind of issue they want to work out and they want to work with someone that's been in the trenches like you, how can they reach you? So you can go to my website, feedabrain.com forward slash consult or adventuresinbraininjury.com forward slash consult. Um, and you can email me at um, consult at feed the brain or at adventures in brain injury. And just let me know what's going on. And then if, uh, if I think that we can, we can, um, we can have a, a powerful chat together, a yeah. good discovery call, 
um, I'll send you a calendar link and we'll we'll schedule a free consultation. I think that's great because I think people need hope that someone's been there before. And then if they've been there before, they can help you navigate through it, which I love. I think that's great. And I want to get a sense. Number one, I want to just know what are the, some of the supplements that you've done on the neurological side to improve your brain and performance? And then last but not least, if there's anything else that you've done that we haven't been able to touch in this conversation, what's that next thing that you did that was a big needle mover? No oh, man, there's there's a lot there. <laughs> I know. So, Let's start with supplements first. I'll, I'll then I'll come back so, the other yeah. way. Again. So supplements. I actually have a handout on feederbrain.com. Like if Great. you down in the middle of the page, mm-hmm. you get uh, five supplements that that um, I take, and um, I'll I'll tell you what they are. Also, so we have uh, omega three, specifically ones high in DHA and EPA. Um, I'm especially EPA or sorry, especially DHA. I just confused thing. Right. So the EPA is going to be the 20 carbon. That's the, the e, that's the one that's going to help with inflammation. And you're yes. saying DHEA, the Dacosa hex note, that's for the neurological health, right? Right. Right. And I Got mean, it. if you have, if you have inflammation in your brain, you definitely want EPA. And of course they come together and they work synergistically. So if you have both, it's awesome. So, um, and and that that comes mostly from from fish oils, um, but if you get a fish oil and you look on the back, and it doesn't tell you what the EPA and DHA ratio uh, amounts are, that's not what you want. Are you using the one from Apex? I'm not. No, I'm. Uh, Which company? No. Carlson's or? No, I'm. Not, I'm using right now. I'm using Zymogen. Okay. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's a good product. Yeah, yep. it's Excellent. good. Yeah, the the DHA one. I really What's like next? What's next um, on your list? Next, uh, organ meat supplements. Ooh, love because, it. Because organ meats are awesome if you have a taste for them. Or, you know, but uh, honestly, I travel all the time. And um, and it's hard to get organ meats. Or, or like I'm staying with a friend. I'm like, hey, I'm going to cook some organ meats. And they're like, you're going to do what? <laughs> Not here you are. <laughs> and so... So I get supplements. So there's this company um, called uh, called Ancient Nutrition, um, or no, no, I'm sorry, Ancient Supplements. Ancient Nutrition is like is yeah, like Axe, the Axe's company. Yeah, yeah. 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 Ancient Supplements, um, and you can go there. You can use coupon code Feed a Brain for I think ten or fifteen percent discount. Oh, cool. On there. And they make it, they, they have all sorts of different organ meats because a lot of companies are, or the companies that do this usually do beef liver and that's it. And the fact is we evolved eating all of those organs, you know, like, so getting a variety of different organ meats is really important as well. So I really like what they do. They have, they have different kinds of organ meats and they also have one that's like a blend. Um, so that's, that's another one where, you know, if you don't eat organ meat every day, that's a great option. Love it. And then with the organ meats, we're getting what we're getting B12. We may get some extra iron in there. We may get some fat soluble vitamin, vitamin A in there. What other powerful nutrients are in organ meats outside of those that I just said? You're also getting choline, oh, which choline. Is- yeah, super important great. for for all sorts of neurotransmitters. Egg yolks are great for choline. What else? They are. They are. Um, uridine as well. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. And uridine is 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 also one of the nutrients for synaptogenesis that I talk about in the book. Um, because and uridine is created in the pathway. Um, it can be created from choline, but it's kind of limited. And um, when we include uridine monophosphate. It, it just enhances neuroplasticity a great deal. Awesome. I think it's also a building block for your RNA too, right? Yes. Yes, it is. Great. What's it. next? All right. So, uh, or meats. Oh, sea vegetables. So, iodine. sea vegetables, yeah, for your iodine, right? Mm-hmm. Because the majority of the iodine Americans get are from iodized salts, which... Um, which isn't really an optimal. It's it's not very close to food, right? Um, so we can do so much better with with uh, with sea vegetables. And switching up what sea what kinds of sea vegetables you get is also really cool. 
So I actually suggest two different supplements. One is a, cul a kelp supplement. One is a dull supplement. And I recommend alternating between the two. Great. Excellent. Yeah. Anything else? E probiotics. I like okay. probiotics. As probiotics well. for gut health, right? Because remember, yeah. well, I mean, you know, right? The gut's the second brain. I'm just curious, how much success did you have healing your brain by focusing on the gut? What did you notice? Extreme, extreme. You know, when I said the uh, nutritional protocol that Collagen put me on, that was the leaky gut protocol. So I was supplementing with leaky gut healing um, compounds like a glutamine and marshmallow root extract. Yeah. And then I was also um, supplementing a little bit for my brain with like alpha GPC and, and some other um, yep. and some B, B vitamins to support my brain health. And then an elimination diet to heal my digestion. And that's when I regained clarity. That's, that, that changed everything. It changed and I, everything. And so I saw they, on, your, on your feed brain website, you interviewed Dr. Karazian. And Dr. Yeah. Karazian lectured before talking about how brain injuries can actually create leaky gut. So I imagine exactly. by helping the brain, you also have to fix the gut because you probably developed a leaky gut with the brain injury, right? Do we have time for, for me to uh, – yeah. To rock an analogy here. Yeah. So, all right. So, what, yeah, absolutely right about brain injury screwing up digestion. I mean, basically, your brain's the puppet master, right? Mm -hmm. Everything is a puppet, right? So, your brain controls everything in your body. And so, if you, if you bonk your head and you, you screw up the communication between your brain and your gut, like now we're having some problems with digestion. So intestinal permeability or leaky gut is extremely common with brain injuries or any neurological condition, actually. Um, Alzheimer's, they said, can be, can be uh, uh, what is it? Constipation is so common with, with Alzheimer's. It's one of the like biggest telltale signs of, of neurodegeneration. Great, great information. Awesome. Yeah. Is there anything else you wanted to mention? I didn't hear you mention like too many like antioxidant compounds. Uh, mm. What's your take on those like curcumin or resveratrol or the green tea extracts? What's your take? I'm a huge fan of them um, in, in stages when you need them. Uh, I, I prefer to get my antioxidants from diet at this point from my food um, by eating, you know, produce and antioxidant rich foods. Of course. Um, but of course, yeah, uh, resveratrol is great. What moved the needle for you? Because I get there's a lot of theoretical things. Which things did you incorporate into your protocol that helped or that you saw maybe a palpable improvement on? Um, well, I, 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 at what point are you talking about? I would just say over the – you can just be very broad in it. You know, Early on, this helped, but long-term, this has been better. All right, right. Um, Let's see. I mean, overall, healing my gut was fantastic. Of course. And then moving towards ketogenic and moving towards a healthy um, version of a paleo diet because paleo is a great template for me. But I, I wanted to go further because as we talked about, there's a lot of paleo junk food. So narrowing in on, on the nutrients and really writing the book – um, really gave me an, a really clear idea. It, it helped me to solidify exactly what I was doing to optimize my brain function. And, uh, you know, the book really, really just is, it is the resource that I wish I had, you know, as I was going through dietarily to figure out what I could do to feed my brain optimally. So, so it's it's hard to say like one or two things. Get the book. <laughs> Check it awesome, out. man. Feedyourbrain.com. No, feed a brain. Uh, First feed a brain.com. And then we have your um podcast, Adventures in Brain Injury. We'll put the links below, everyone. Kevin, is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up here? Man, uh you talked about my interview with Dr. Karazian. So that was for the Feed a Brain interview series, which was a dream come true for me. I got to interview the the like top brain and nutrition experts of our time. Sorry, some 
of the top brand nutrition experts. Totally. Right totally. I don't want to offend anybody. You know. No, no. That's, this, is great. <laughs> this is great information out there. Anyone listening that that's dealt with any of these type of issues and wants to, to walk with someone through their journey and, and, and Kevin's could be a great fit for you. So reach out to him. Kevin, amazing having you, man. Are you going to be at Paleo Facts this month? Yeah, you know, man. I'll be there. I'll see you. Uh, all right, man. Hey, I'll look you up. It was phenomenal chatting with you. You have an awesome night and uh, have a safe trip back to Austin too. Awesome. Thanks so much. Take care, man.